I'm just uh, trimming off the bungs on this piece of molding on the aft deck. So today, uh, in this episode, we're gonna get the cover boards installed and also the tow boards. And then we're gonna talk about how to make bungs and install them. All of that coming up on this episode of The Art of Boat Building. Well, you can see I've got three coats of the Lust Varnish on the back side of these covering boards, and you can see it has quite a, a sheen to them. So I've had several questions uh, about the covering boards from the last episode, and one of the questions had to do with cupping. And what cupping is, is when the moisture of a board evaporates from the one side faster than the other, causing the board have a cupping action. And there's actually three ways that you can avoid a board to cup. And the first would be to have really well seasoned lumber. Now as many of you know, this walnut that I have is really well seasoned. In fact, I inherited this from my old uh, sculpture professor who had been storing these for nearly 50 years. So they were definitely good and dry. Now the second thing is what is called quarter sawing, and that is, has to do with the way the grain is oriented in the board. And I'll show you with these two boards over here. So I have two boards here. Uh, the first is an offcut from the uh, lumber that was used for the center board, and it is quarter sawn. And what quarter sawn means is that the grain, the annual rings, is running perpendicular to the face. And you can see those in there running almost exactly um, perpendicular. So this is a piece of quarter sawn lumber. And what that means is that one side is as stable as the other. Now, unlike this piece of decking board that I have here, where you can see the annual rings run across the face. And in this case, this board would most likely cup pretty drastically, meaning that it would dry out the oils and the moisture in the board would dry out more on the surface here than on the bottom, uh, causing that to have that kind of cupping action uh, in there. So you can see this piece uh, not only is uh, a good stable piece of wood, but that it is really about as uh, quarter sawn as one could get. So the last way is to seal the entire board. And that's what I did with the covering boards there where I put three coats of varnish on the bottom side of them. And the top side will get uh, at least three, maybe up to six coats of varnish on it. So what that does is it completely seals the board so that moisture cannot leave from one side faster than the other side. Uh, and by moisture, I mean not only water, but also the oils that are in the wood. So that actually seals it all in there. So the best thing to do is to seal all uh, surfaces of the board and that will prevent cupping. So the three things were picking good season stock, quarter sawn, and making sure that all surfaces are sealed. Now the other question had to do with how symmetrical the boat is turning out. So in order to do that, I wanted to show you by putting these two uh, covering boards uh, back to back. And we can see when I put the two together here that there's only about a 3 16 inch difference. And between maybe a couple of different uh, frame sections here. So all in all, I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Now one thing that is inevitable uh, when you're painting or uh, varnishing uh, boards like this is that some drips um, can occur. And one of the best ways is to use a razor blade to get those drips out of there as opposed to using uh, sandpaper. Because sandpaper will, one, gum up, and secondly, it will bite into the wood and it's very difficult to get those um, drips out of there. So let me show you over here where the drips are a little more uh, uh, prominent. 
So as you can see, there are several little drips that came ar around the edge of the board to the front top side here. So what I do is I take a single edge razor blade and I roll it back and forth like this over the top of those drips. And you see what that does is that just kind of cuts off those drips and actually feel the razor blade kind of catching that. And once it gets smooth, you know you've got them all off of there. You can even see ones down here where I have, um, you can still see them in there. So you just kind of keep working it. Once you get those off, then you can go back in and hit it with some 220 grit sandpaper. And it's all ready for the next coat. So the first thing that I did was I took some blue tape and I put it along the border here so that I would know where there was a frame station. Uh, when I put the screws in. My plan is to put a screw every other station. So now I've got that in there. Uh, what I want to do is make it sure it's nice and tight to the four section. And take a, this block that's a little higher than the combing and clamp it. And I'm going to go on down the line and put several blocks like that in here. Now I've got it all clamped in. I'm pretty happy with the fit. I'm going to um, go wrong and screw, uh, drill and screw. Um, first thing is that make sure that this is nice and flush. And I've got my um, tapered bit here that has uh, put countersinks and counter bores at the same time. I'm ready to move over to the next station here. And one of the things about the difference between a countersink and a counter bore is the countersink is this tapered part that is the same as the uh, bottom side of the screw head. And then you can see here it's perfectly straight and that is a counter bore. So a countersink, and I cut a piece of, uh, drilled a hole in one and cut it in half here so you can see. Well, you can see how it comes down that it's straight. So that's the counter bore and then the counter sink is when it angles in here the way that the head of the screw angles in there. So that this then when it's in there will set in there like so. Get my finger out of the way so you can see that. So that leaves us enough room here then to put our bung in.
last screw for this side. All right, I've got uh, the port side all done. Now I'll go through and do the same over on the uh, starboard side. And once that's completed, then we can start uh, making some bungs. Well, now that I've got the starboard side all fastened down, we now need to turn our attention to making those plugs or bungs as they're referred to. And in order to make those, we need a plug cutter. So what I have here is a plug cutter, and you can see it has four cutting blades on there. And what that does is it will then cut this wooden plug out of a piece of stock. So you can see it's uh, round this direction. Now there's several different style of plug cutters that you can get. I like these that have four cutters as opposed to the ones that just have two cutters, like this one. For uh, my experience, these do not work very well. Um, that, so if you're gonna buy some, buy some that have the four um, uh, cutter heads on it. Now the other thing that this particular one does is down in the bottom, it curves just a little bit, so it puts just a small little chamfer on the plug. You can see it just barely on there. And what that does is that helps it start going into the hole. Now these come in a variety of different sizes. And you can see I have some here that are, um, I think this one is a three quarters and I think this one is a five eighths. What we wanna do is to match the cutter head to the size of the counter bore that I had mentioned earlier. And in this case, this counter bore is 3 eighths of an inch, so I have a um, cutter here that cuts a 3 eighths inch plug um, like that. How these work is this will go then into that little counter bore like so, and then we'll come back later and we'll trim this off. So let's put this cutter head in the drill press and I'll show you how to cut some bungs. So we get the uh, cutter put in the drill press here. One of the things about putting a drill or a, anything in a drill press, you should always tighten two holes at minimum. Uh, if you don't, it will slip and definitely is true with this uh, cutter because it creates so much friction. So what I have here, is a piece of walnut stock and I've cut it so it's about three quarters of an inch wide and deep enough so that my cutter will not bottom go all the way through but it will bottom out at the top of it so it can cut that little chamfer or bevel that I had showed you before. So it's a pretty simple process in that we just need to drill a hole or drill a plug, I should say. So each side of these, the uh, covering boards, there are eight screws. So I'm gonna go through here and cut eight plugs. Okay, now that we've got our uh, plugs all cut, I'll take over to a bandsaw and cut them loose. So one of the first things I want to do is these, that cutter is just a little bit over a half an inch. So I want to take a pencil and mark this about a half an inch. And I'm just going to guess about where that is. And the next thing is to take some tape Put along the top of it here. So 
Now we can cut that out. Now that we have our plugs, we can now just take this tape and pull it off there. And all of our plugs are right in line. Now, one of the nice things about this is then when I'm putting them in there, I know that as I pick it off the tape that this is the orientation of the grain. And that's important. Uh, you'll see when we get over there uh, on the boat. So the uh, glue that I'm going to be using is uh, Type Bond 3, and it is a uh, exterior glue that is waterproof. Uh, why I'm using this as opposed to an epoxy or something like that is that this glue, uh, if you take a heat gun and warm it up, uh, it will soften. So it would be much easier to remove a uh, plug if I ever need to do that by using this glue. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, put a little bit of it on top of the, this lid here, like so. And then pull a plug off. I'm doing it so that, uh, so the grain is going this way on the um, boat here. So I'm going to want then these to be in this orientation. So if I grab one, keeping it in that orientation, dip it in the glue a little bit, and then place it in the hole. And just give it a little tap. And then just move on down the line. Okay, last one. Now I'll go do the same thing over on the starboard side. All the uh, uh, bungs have now set in there for overnight and are good and dry. And so the next thing now is to trim them off. And I've got a few tools here. Um, one is a, a really thin trim pull saw here and a, a one inch chisel. And I've got a couple of blocks of sandpaper here, a 120 and a 220. And what the trick, or not the trick, but the, um, the thing that you want to do here is to lay the saw flat on here. Um, one, one tooth on here is a little uh, less aggressive than the other. And then holding it, pushing it down flat is to saw across there carefully until you get the plug off there. Now, in some cases, uh, if the uh, plug, if you're worried about holding the saw down on there, you can take a piece of cardstock like this and put it over the plug and then use that to saw on, which will also uh, that, that way you won't have to worry about marring up the surface here. I've had a little enough experience that it's not something that I feel like I need to do. And then the next thing is to take a um, very sharp chisel and you then can basically go across this and pare off any extra. Now I got it pretty close there so hardly anything uh, trimmed off there at all. 
The next step would then be to sand with a 120 grit sandpaper. Until you get it nice and fat, flat. And then finish that off with a 220. That, and then virtually, once that's varnished, those uh, um, bungs will disappear. So I'll do one more here with a little closer look for you. So as we move down the line here to the next one, uh, this is where you can use that piece of cardstock over that and then use that to hold it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it this way because I feel like I can get it a little closer and uh, I'm not um, as worried about marring the surface, just mainly from the experience of doing it. You can see that's pretty close. In fact, you can barely feel it when I rub across there. Now the trick with the chisel is to hold it flat and use it mainly just to pare it off. By paring, you see how I kind of move the chisel so that it kind of cuts, not a blunt edging, but a smooth cut like that. This one was did not need hardly anything at all. Now, the danger to using a chisel like this is if, and you've, you may have seen people taking bung and literally knocking the whole bung off doing this. The problem with that is if the grain drops down just a little bit, then you could cut the grain and it could go down below the surface of this. So I would not recommend knocking the bungs off with a chisel at all. And like I said, uh, you use a, a 120 to clean it up and then finish it off with 220. last one was a little harder to get uh, tight to it because of uh, the tightness in this corner. So it's a good example to show you how I, when I say pairing, how I mean how I'm moving the, the chisel, I'm sliding it so I, as though I'm sort of slicing it. All right, that's it for uh, this side. I'll go over to the port side and do the same thing. And uh, then we can get started making those uh, tow rails. So the first thing I need to do in order to get the tow rail is, of course, see how long a board I need. Now, uh, up here at the front, coming back about six inches is a bronze uh, bow cleat. And that uh, I have not made yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the tow rail about five inches away from the stem here. And then I can trim that off later once I get that bronze casting. So what that measures then is just a little bit under six feet. Um, so I'll need to find a board in order to do that. Now I'm gonna break it right here at where the chain plate is. And what the remaining piece then is, looks about 22 inches. So I think it'll look best if I put the, uh, that, the break right here at the chain plate as opposed to out here in the middle. So the first thing that I need to do then is to find a piece of um, stock that will be nice and clear that I can use for that tow rail. So I decided that I would put a scarf joint 
in the tow rail before I installed it. I think it'd make a much nicer uh, finish. And as you can see, it um, is almost indistinguishable. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set the trim up here and um, where the chain plate is here, make a mark and cut a little um, notch out of there so that uh, it will lay out flat against the trim here. So before I get started installing this, I had uh, varnished the bottom and uh, top side, a um, couple coats on the bottom and one on the top. So I'm gonna start here at the um, chain plate, put a couple of screws on each side of it. Okay, now that I've got those two screws uh, attached, what I'm gonna do is just slowly work this around and looks like about every, let's see, it's about like every eight inches or so, I'll put a screw. Last one. So uh, now that I've got this one on, I'll get the starboard side on and then um, cut some plugs and bung all of these holes. So that's it for the last of the bungs. Uh, I will do the same as I had done on the covering boards. I'll trim them off and sand them down and then I'll get some varnish on the whole thing. So if you want to see the finished product, come join me at the Wooden Boat Show that'll be in Mystic, Connecticut from August 20th to the 22nd. So I and the boat will be there, and I hope that if you're in the area, you'll be able to come and stop by and uh, say hello. So I hope to see you at the Wooden Boat Show. In the meantime, thanks for watching The Art of Boat Building.